Okay, great. We're, we're just recording now. Who you are, where you're joining from. Uh, maybe share something about uh, somebody who inspired you or invited you today. Uh, and, and why are you here? What would really make good use or value of your time? Who would like to start? I'm so sorry, Ronnie. It just cut out there. I don't know if that's my connection or yours. Okay. No, I'll, I'll say that again. I'll say that again. It'll be good okay. to get a sense of who we oh, are. Oh, that's on. much so better. If you can Thank just you. introduce yourself, share who you are, where you're joining from, maybe something about who inspired you or what inspired you to show up today and on time. Uh, and uh, <laughs> what's something that will make good use of your time today? Like, why are you here? What's something you want to discover? Sure, I'm happy to go if no one else is. Yeah, go for um, it. So um, I actually got the details themselves from Anoli. Um, okay. I saw her pictures on Facebook and a couple of other friends who have, I think have also been through this Niraj and Dharapan and that. So they've been telling me about it recently. Um, and it was just interesting because I'd just been speaking to them about just saying that I, I I want to be healthier, but also lose it. And somebody just said, you need to just speak to Anoli. That's it. Just, just speak to her. Um, I about myself, I I think I've just been working too much. Uh, I'm a I'm a deputy head of a school, but also a teacher. So I've basically been doing two jobs in the in the time of one. So I've been doing really long hours uh -huh. and it's been at the complete detriment of my my health, my nutrition, my stress levels have been high, my sleep. Um, I also have a four-year-old who doesn't sleep very well. So I'd say that I'm probably in the worst possible health, uh, healthy state that I've been very fatigued. And so, yes, a couple of people just said, you need to speak to an Oli. Um, and that's how I, she kind of told me about the program and recommended I come on here. And I guess what I was hoping to um, achieve from this was just, well, just to learn a little bit more about it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being open minded to being inspired by somebody else because it's very easy for us to see other people's results. But it actually takes a certain kind of being to be inspired and called into action by something that that has moved them, and then step forward into hey, I'm, I'm open to discovering that there might be something out there that I haven't heard of or known before. So thanks so much for sharing that. Thanks for being inspired. And thanks for being here today. Uh, Pooja S. Yes, so um, I'm from Kenya, uh -huh. and I um, um, actually saw um, Urvi's journey, and she's my cousin. Okay, all right. And uh, yeah, um, I have been doing a lot of fitness. I'm quite active. Um, just really wanted to see what this is about. I have a lot of issue with nutrition and food. Um, pretty much that's where um, I need help with. Mm -hmm. with in terms of um, fitness, I'm quite active. Mm -hmm. So, um, just really want to turn, um, always wanted to achieve something, but have never managed to achieve it. So wanted to see what this is about. Definitely. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Urvi has really been inspiring quite a lot of people. And, uh, so welcome yeah, here. She's uh, done amazing. <laughs> she has done amazing. She's inspired so many people. I think she's been inundated and I've been inundated since I shared a photo with a lot of messages, people reaching out to me, asking about her transformation and how she did and so on. And, uh, and maybe that's why we have a lot of Shahs on today's call. I don't know if everyone is connected to Urbi yeah. from the Shahs. <laughs> uh, probably. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've got Tanvi, you've typed in your, your intro here. So I'm Tanvi from... Uh, uh, Orange, New South Wales, Australia, small town, four hours west from Sydney. Got it. Introduced by Urvi again in Kenya. Just recently had my first child and during the pregnancy, I was categorized high risk for GDM. Uh, got it. I really want to keep that at base. Sorry, can't talk. Okay, got it. Makes sense. And I'm guessing it's late at night where you are, but thank you so much for being on uh, all the way from Orange. So thank you for being here. Um, and we have uh, Bindi. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, yeah, sorry, I joined in a little bit late. Um, yeah, I've also been inspired by Urvi's journey. Awesome. <laughs> I think this week Urvi's just hit a really strong nail for a lot of people. Um, well, generally, um, so I'm from Kenya. I'm much older. Um, I'm 
I just wanted to find out more about your whole, um, you know, your whole journey, your whole, what all this is about. Mm -hmm. I haven't really spoken to Ulvi. I've just been following her and um, these pictures that were put up last week have just um, amazed me. Uh, I meet her once in a while and I've seen her transformation. We used to spin together before she had her babies. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, fitness wise, I'm, I think I'm very active. I, uh, that's my go-to. I'm very busy with my work. Um, my boys left for Spain when I was much, when, when they were very young. So I sort of found things to keep myself active. Uh, and I've been, I've gone through, um, several phases in my life mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes I feel like I hit um, a plateau uh, yeah. in terms of just generally with my with my um, emotional and mental well-being yeah and the moment I'm struggling with losing weight um, yeah. no matter what I'm doing it's just it's just not working mm -hmm. uh, and then Sometimes I'll get through it and I'll say, no, this, it's fine. I'm okay where I am. And you, you need, I need to look after myself emotionally and not let that get to me. And then sometimes it just really gets to me because I think, I'm, I think that I'm doing everything right. And then yeah. still nothing is going right. So um, I thought maybe, you know, I'll find something through this um, journey. And so I want to just find out more about it. Got it. Brilliant. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being on. And, uh, and, and thank you for being inspired by Irvi as well. And, um, you know, I would love for you to share more as we go through today. Like, what are some of the things that, that hold you back that you deal with? But a big part of our program we're going to talk about is it is so not just a physical program. There is a big focus on the emotional, the mental and the spiritual uh, well-being side of what we do. Uh, it's quite a holistic program and it's very community based. And the reason when we, you, you mentioned about going through phases and why we go through phases is um, we are often trying to be our own best coach and our own best guide, but we're using the same mindset that probably gets us into the same predicament time after time after time. And so there's a saying in the personal development world by Jim Rohn, which is we are the average of the five people we surround ourselves with most. And what we try to do in the Fit Banker community is we're creating a combustion engine of people who are all up to empowering, uplifting, and inspiring each other. And that has a compound effect much greater than one plus one being much more than two, right? That's the, the experience people get left with. And so, uh, you know, thanks for being here. And uh, as you go through the program, you'll get a sense and connection of how what's going on in your world emotionally, mentally, even relationship-wise, sleep-wise, has an impact on our well-being and we explain the whole science behind that and everything that we're doing is backed by science it's not some woo woo stuff and this is not also a diet uh it's not like a gimmicky diet so we're going to talk about some of the things out there that people have done and tried that have them volley back or it works short term and then they pile it back on uh so i'm going to talk about that as we go through today's but on that note i just want to welcome everyone thanks all for being on as mentioned if you joined after i stated this uh it would be great um, if you can stay on camera or be on camera for uh, as as much as possible, because uh, I love feeding off your energy. If you're smiling and laughing at my jokes, then I know they're working and I keep going. Uh, and if you go off camera, then I think, oh man, these guys don't find me interesting enough. Uh, I'm just kidding. So, but it, it just helps so that you're more present and get the most out of today. If you have any questions as we go through it, this is interactive. Just come off mute or raise your virtual hand so I see it st stick out. And, uh, and then I can ask you to unmute and you can ask or share anything. Uh, so to create context about why we do and how I came into existence and I'm gonna share my journey is uh, this beautiful quote by the Dalai Lama when asked what surprised him most about humanity, the Dalai Lama answered man because he sacrifices his health in order to make money and then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he's so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present, the result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die and then dies having never really lived. And I went through a personal setback and experience where I experienced this firsthand, and I'll be sharing my story in a bit, but it was what led me to my personal transformation and journey. So that on the left is me, uh, 33 years old at the time, 40, 
40 or 41 inch waist and 108 kilos. So, um, you know, uh, that is what 250 pounds approximately. Um, today's session is a masterclass on the pursuit of optimal health. Now, if you think about what we mean by the pursuit of optimal health, the way most of us are around our health or well being, or the way, way healthcare systems are in this world, is we're of a view that if something happens, we go to the hospital and they sort us out. We often go to hospital when it's a bit too late and all their job is to get you off the red line, prevent death and put you back into mainstream. Whereas we're saying, why do we just need to be in survival in mainstream survival mode of just about making it through coping with our bodies, with our mental and emotional well-being? Why don't we go towards what's called an optimal state or stage of our physicality, our emotional well-being, our mental well-being? And that's what we exist to do. And we do that very simply through education. Uh, and we believe education, not medication, is the way that this is sustainable. Once you are trained and equipped with the tools, then you have them, then you can leverage them, or you can continue to stay in the education program. Uh, and our program has an option for you to continue on your journey beyond 90 days, uh, which, which many people love or do. And like Urvi has done, she's on the second program. But that said, any transformation that you want in your life, whether you want to transform your relationship status, your financial status, turn around your business uh, or, or career, or whether you want to transform your health. If your why is clear, then the how is easy, right? So that why has to be something visual that pulls us into action and out of familiar and out of our comfort zone. So a big ethos that we do is we're regularly getting people comfortable with being uncomfortable through small habits and challenges that we do, but none of them are like deadly or dangerous. We have a 76 year old and an 80 year old on our program. And we've had people as young as 13 year old do this program. So you cannot commence any transformation journey without a very clear why. Uh, that said, I'm going to talk to you about something I'm personally committed to in the people we coach, which is every human being gets to discover and live with what we have within us called our unlimited potential. And this is an inspiring why to be inspired by and to be pulled into action. And I got present to this when I was actually lying in my house in hospital bed at the age of 33. And it was a realization I had. Now I'm going to ask you guys while you're on and uh, I, I can see nobody's driving. So you should be safe to briefly close your eyes. And if you can close your eyes while you're there, I want you to picture yourself a bird's eye view of yourself. But 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 you're somewhere doing something that you love or you're somewhere discovering something that you never knew you would love, never tried before. But there's one thing different about this person that's doing it. And this person that's doing it, you that's doing it, you have peak, peak, peak energy. You have unbelievable, unlimited energy that you've not experienced before. You have a peak level of strength. You, you feel stronger than you have before. And you have a whole and complete level of self-belief and self-confidence, like you're so able to pull off whatever it is you're up to uh, and you've never felt this way about yourself. Now, if you experience that peak energy, peak strength and peak confidence, who would you be being or what would you be doing? Now, while you keep your eyes closed, I want to share what I saw when I did this. I was 33, I was in hospital bed and I'm thinking to myself, what on earth am I doing here? How have I wound up in hospital? And I would rather be doing something else. And this is not going to be the future where I'm regular hospital visits or going in for checkups or on medication. This is not going to be the future that I'm committed to. I'm really committed to by the time I'm 49, 50 in 15, 16 years from now, I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I want to be going up there with my kids. I want that to be the new normal. And I remember having that visual running up a mountain with two boys in tow. And I had no kids at the time. Uh, we weren't even expecting. And fast forward a few years, the following year, within a year, still overweight and unhealthy at 100 kg, I first summited Mount Kilimanjaro. Since then, I've summited it six times. And the seventh time I took my three-year-old son, we now have two boys, my three-year-old son up to 4,000 meters. He's the youngest three-year-old to reach 4,000 meters. Now that's what's possible when we have a power visual to pull us into. Okay, that said, I'm gonna ask you now to come back into the webinar come back into today's session. And I want, to, I want you guys to share, what was it you saw if you had a very empowering why? What was the visual you saw? Who'd like to share first? 
I'm going to make you laugh. Make me laugh. <laughs> okay. So one, one dream that I've always had since I was very young and I was a strong swimmer, I was strong at everything was, I, okay, this is, this is just something that I've always had. And I still feel that this is what I want um, is to have um, a six pack. It's just never happened and I just want it. But on the other side, I I recently start, well, two years ago, I started um, my trapeze yoga journey. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I was at the peak of my energy, I would love to become an instructor. Amazing. Amazing. Is that is that there in Kenya yet or no? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. But okay. the cool. courses are all online. And mm -hmm. I've been doing the yoga, but I just, I would love to become an instructor. That that mm -hmm. would be my, something that I'd really want to do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm not laughing because that's happened in our program with multiple people, as you can imagine. They have gone from, I can't imagine having a six pack or something I've always wanted to getting a six pack. So uh, it is very doable. I'm going to share some of those photos as we go through uh, today's masterclass. But thanks so much for sharing that. Keep that visual clear. We will make reference to that later in today's session. Uh, who else would like to share? Pooja? Sure, I'm happy to share. Um, it, was, it was actually just, it was very simple, and but it was a very strong image. Um, I think I'm, it's, it's funny because I, I'm just fatigued all the time. Mm -hmm. um, just, just absolutely exhausted. And I think that I just have, I go through life, <laughs> very busy life, but it's with this haze. And with this, it's, it's funny to say I'm lethargic because I'm so busy, it's, but, but it is, it's this sense of being lethargic. And I just, I know this is so simple, but I just had this spring in my step. I just had the energy I wanted and um, I just felt quite full of life. And I was, I just felt, yeah, just bouncier. And I was visually just in a forest actually and um and walking around and i was he, he could hear these birds and these trees and i and and i it was it was it was just really um i just felt quite happy and 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 yeah very full of energy amazing amazing and that is also something that a lot of us um take for granted and we think it's normal when we're feeling lethargic or fatigued especially around family or our daily work our daily routine our daily chores and there is an alternate way of being. There is completely an alternate way of being. And I'm gonna share, like I would spring out of bed um, thinking, why on earth did I not discover this in my 20s, right? And that was in my mid 30s when I took on my transformation. Okay, anyone else want to share? Sanvi, if you did it, and if you can't can share the camera, you can <clears throat> type it out as well. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, so I saw myself um, on the track obviously um, full of energy, um, being what I've always wanted to be as how um, Bindi said, you know, having a six pack, being all toned and stuff. And obviously all um, aspects of my life, career, spiritual, being at the most peak, that's what I saw. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And something as well that has happened inside of this world, we're having people becoming coaches, becoming PTs, running uh, classes, instructor-led sessions, uh, forfeit banker for themselves and in their own world. And uh, it's brilliant that you have that visual. The stronger that visual is, the stronger we have a pull towards it. Now that said, all that we visualized and all that we're pulling ourselves into, there's good news and there's bad news. You can pull yourself into that, but you also want to get that where you are right now is a function of uh, something that we have. Let me just read Tanvi's point. I saw two things. I've always wanted to wear a bikini, but even when I was at my skinniest, I, could muster, uh, I couldn't muster the courage. Doing activities with my children, like trekking Machu Picchu, which Fit Banker will be doing, swimming at the Great Barrier Reef, runs in the beaches, etc., etc. Awesome. So really beautiful. Have those visuals clear and, and powerful and real for you. But as I said, we can use visuals to pull us into them. But that said, if that holds true, then something you want to know about where you are currently your current body and your current lifestyle is already a function of what you've previously visualized. It's what you believed was possible. It sounded rational and logical to live the life that you're doing now. It, it was acceptable. It was tolerable. It was common sense that that's naturally how I'm going to look and wind up. 
what we don't realize is that the power of that thought and vision is quite empowering and influential in getting us to have wound up the way we are, whether it's the qualifications we have, the homes we live in, the families we have or don't have. It's a function of what our internal belief system is. Not what we say, not just what we say, I want this or I desire that or I wrote down my goals, A, B, C, D, but actually what you perceived as really achievable or believable for you is what you've stepped into. And it is your internal belief system. Your internal belief system, that big I that you are, is made up of three small eyes, which is the inspiration, the in, that inspiration that you have, the information that you've gained or learned or possess or you need to achieve that, and the implementation that is the journey that will get you there, the structure that will get you there. Now, the inspiration is what we've done. We just did a visual of something to pull us into. And most of us will declare that now and then it goes out of existence. If you keep that in existence, you write that down, you document that, you share that with a group of people, it gives you something to work towards. The information is how do you get there, whatever that is, whether it's a yoga course, whether it's transforming your body, whether it's climbing a mountain, there's a set of information to do that. Now, you could have information how to book a ticket and go to Machu Picchu and how to move one leg in front of the other and get to the top. That's the information you need. But the actual implementation is when you book, is when you're on that mountain and you have a guide around you and you have a mapped out trek and you have a mapped out route. That's called the implementation structure. And so at FitBanker, that's the bit we provide. So we will we, we will rewire and ask you to expand what we call your greater why when you sign up to the program. And it's a, it's a real question we ask at the start and you wanna give it some good thought and you can and always will be able to expand that why. Right. And so the wider that why, the more people it involves, the greater the outreach of that, the more likely that it's big enough to pull you and stretch you to fulfill on that. Next is the information. We will provide you with information around health, around nutrition, around metabolism, around sleep, around boosting energy, around boosting metabolism and so on. But the thing that really makes the difference is the implementation structure. So joining a program, joining a coaching body, being part of a group of people that are up to the same, and getting on weekly coaching calls, weekly webinars, Friday night surgeries is what keeps you in action. No one is disciplined and nobody has willpower. All, all those, those are words that we describe a person that has stuck to a structure or a routine. But it's providing and signing up to a, jumping into a structure or routine that has people describe us as, oh, you're disciplined. Or Urvi was amazing. I can't believe Urvi did that. Urvi is so disciplined. Urvi puts her mind to stuff. No, Urvi joined an implementation structure. And that did the work for her. She had to do her part and we had to make the asks of her. On that note, just want to welcome Nikit. Welcome Nikit uh, for joining. We've just begun a couple slides ago and we did a short visualization of what and why we would want to take on our health. And a powerful why is uh, allows us to have, uh, you know, makes the how easy. And so uh, everyone shared various things of, as to why they're taking themselves on and uh, from whether getting a bikini body, whether it's climbing a mountain, whether it's being more energetic in their day. And we're talking of our belief system that has us be the way we are right now. We're a function of the inspiration we have, the information that we possess or gain, and the implementation structure. But we're in the world of transformation. And in transformation, um, uh, you want to rewire that IBS, that internal belief system. So to create something new, we need to alter our internal understanding. And that's a big part of what FitBanker focuses on. So before I go into the science, I'm going to share very quickly my story and some of the results we've caused on other stories and how I went from being a fat banker to fit banker. That's me on the left, 2014. Uh, I'm standing, the East Africans might know this guy called Ashish Takar. And uh, I was at JP Morgan. And that guy on the left is the founder of Mara, Mara Foundation. Uh, on the right, that's uh, me post my transformation. It's about seven months of that journey to get to, to where I was. In those seven months, I lost 70 pounds and I lost nine inches off my waist and I became way more energetic, more, more stronger than I've ever been in my life. And that's at 35. And I thought, hang on, shouldn't I have had this in my 20s? Why was the science and education not offered to us through school, education, our professional careers and so on? Uh, and Nikit, feel free to come on camera anytime you wish. This is your session, so it's it will be as interactive as you can. And if you're not in a position to, you can type in the chat any questions that you have. Um, okay, so that said, my inspiration and my 
uh, view of success was to be a banker. When I was uh, in my early professional career, the definition of success was an investment banker. I read in the newspaper about these guys going out, having a, a party in Mayfair and leaving a drinks bill of 30,000 pounds. And I thought, wow, I, I'd love to be able to do that. And my, my motto, my inspiration, my information I possessed was all the technical knowledge I did to do my role, but I also had this internal belief called work hard, party harder. That dictated my lifestyle. And so I did work hard and I did party harder and I did show up at all the events, conferences, restaurants, etc., that we had to do living that lifestyle. But underneath this guy that's suited, booted and smiling over here is a person that's resigned. Somebody who's given up that no matter what I try, stuff just, just isn't shifting for me, specifically in the area of health and my body and my physique. And I was lethargic, I was sluggish, and I was fed up of always being tired. And subconsciously what happens is when we think we've tried everything, but nothing is changing, we form a sense without realizing it. And I wasn't somebody who considered myself in denial, but we are subconsciously in denial by the signaling we put up there. What do I mean by signaling? I would show people, look, I can work those hours and I can still go and party the whole night and drink loads and dance on the dance floor and wake up and get back to work the next day. I could still do adventure. So a year after I was hospitalized, I ended up going to Mount Kilimanjaro at 100 kg and 2014 was the year of the ice bucket challenge. And I did uh, what I thought was the world's highest ice bucket challenge at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. That's moments after it froze my face. And in 2014, that's me doing the uh, Daniel Craig pose on a beach in New Zealand. Uh, and I say the Daniel Craig pose because a habit I formed of being in denial was self-deprecating humor. And all of us might have some of that. We joke about ourselves, we joke about our physique, we joke about our love handles. We joke about our energy or our sleeping in or our hangovers, because if we joke about ourselves and mock and taunt ourselves first, then others won't be able to have a dig at us anymore. So it's a subconscious behavior human beings have where they will make mockery of themselves or their relationships or their food or their drink or their money patterns and behavior so that somebody else doesn't taunt and mock them. And that's what I used to do. And a lot of us have some form or version of that. Now, in the midst of living that life in 2013, shortly after I got married, uh, this is a photo from the Fringe Festival. My wife and I had gone to the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. The whole town turns into a town of comedy, performances, artists, circus, stand-up, drama, everything happens. Everyone goes there to be entertained for a whole month. They go and spend three, four days there, and the whole town turns into a performance. And uh, I remember going there to celebrate my wife's birthday. It was the first birthday after we got married. It was our first break after our honeymoon. And on top of that, there was more good news on the way. We were about to become parents. And at that point, it was the three month mark of our pregnancy. And I thought, what a beautiful location and backdrop to take a photo and post on social media and tell the world we were about to become parents. And that future looked beautiful and bright till while we were there, what looked like simple, easy and success and a good life, um, all turned around 180 degrees as we had a miscarriage. And we lost a little one. And it was a crushing moment, as you can imagine, for my wife. It was a crushing moment for me. And I've not been in a position of being able to deal with somebody who's lost their baby, nor being able to process it myself. And trying to deal with that whole thing was a very emotionally strainful evening and night for us. It led to a lot of breakdown in communication, uh, heated argument, uh, not being able to console each other. And I ended up stressing from that. And as a result of stressing from that, I wound up next day in hospital. And I had these random heart palpitations, which weren't going away. And I was rushed into hospital and uh, a whole host of checks were done to make sure this wasn't a heart attack, a stroke or any other issue that had kicked in. And this is me not looking extremely obese, but just carrying more than my body was designed to carry optimally. And my, my heart was at strain. But while I could do all those things physically that I showed, climbing mountains and partying and so on, I was not emotionally resilient. And a lot of us discover this the hard way, that we might be physically fit, but we might not emotionally have the resilience to sustain it all. And I remember there while I was going through all these blood tests and I was having an ECG test and uh, waiting for the results and they were observing me and so on. Uh, this is at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London and around the corner West Kensington is where we lived. And I, my wife is dozing off on the chair there. And I'm like, honey, just go home and sleep in a proper bed and come back tomorrow. 
and she screams at me. She goes, there's no way I'm coming back tomorrow having lost another one. And she didn't want to let go of me till I was 100% perfect and we walk out of there together. And for the first time, it hit me. Wow, I'm saying this to a lady who just lost a baby and now her only other family member and with no friends and family around is saying to her, it'll all be good, uh, just chill out. I'm taking life for granted. And I go for the first time, wow, this other human being and other human beings around me, they actually bank on my fitness, which is why we have the name Fit Banker. And so while we lost our baby, it was the birth of a new vision, a new direction of um, my relationship to health. And I got very clear for myself, I am not going to wind up in hospitals like this. I am going to discover whatever I need to around how to lose fat, how to gain muscle, how to boost energy, how to reboot metabolism, how to reverse age, etc., etc. And we had a miscarriage and we're going to work on our health, our fertility, and we're going to have nice, awesome, healthy babies. We now have two amazing babies, but that setback was what led me to throwing myself into a uh, health transformation, a body, comp uh, body transformation competition. Uh, I had already lost 90 days. So that's my photo on the left after I've lost, sorry, I'd lost 20 kg before the 90 day challenge. I then threw myself in and in those 90 days, I went to lose further, toned further, and I went beyond the 90 day, I went down to 5.9% body fat. But I won that competition and led to a flurry of people reaching out. What did you do? How did you train? What did you eat? Um, and I'm vegetarian. Can I eat this? Can I eat that? And I shared everything about my journey with them. And I realized, wow, there's so many people that want to transform their health. They don't want to become Arnold Schwarzenegger. They may or may not want to take part in a bikini comp uh, competition, but they want to just lose five or 10 kg. They want to feel more energetic. They want to get rid of that fatigue. They want to reverse a lifestyle disease. And, and we can do that. We can solve that for them. So that was the birth of Fit Banker as a business. We're now over six years old. We've had people from 25 or 26 countries. We've had hundreds of people uh, approaching a thousand soon who've done our program. And some of the first people that signed up was this. This is a doctor. She's a GP in San Francisco. And I'm like, geez, how come you've signed up to my program? You're the person we go to when we're unwell. And then more doctors started signing up. And I thought, if doctors are signing up, I better be airtight on my science because I can't afford to trip up on what we're explaining. It needs to make all sense. Uh, Ellie, an Italian, signed up. And when people saw that some of the things you can't eat are pizza and pasta, they said, you'll never get an Italian on your, on your challenge. And well, Ellie came along, lost 11.3 kg, went on to lose 20 kg. And something she wanted, her why that you guys all visualized was to become an actor. She wanted to get into acting and she did a course in theater acting. She then acted in um, uh, theater in London and now she's a screenplay writer in London, having taken on her relationship to herself. Uh, then there are these are other doctors uh, who are called the fit doctors. They're from Orlando, Florida. Guy on the left lost 53 pounds, guy on the right lost 36 pounds. They do these talks and seminars and events around health, but they never looked and felt healthy themselves. Now they get to be a representation of what they stand for. Then there's Simran. Simran's been overweight all her life. Um, and uh, she thought it was just a genetic issue. Nothing that she could do would change. Her family related to her as overweight. Her family said she could never give up this, that, the other. She did a program. She was the female record holder. She lost 15.8 kg. She then went on to lose uh, 20 kg, signed up to Kilimanjaro and uh, joined us on Kilimanjaro. It was a very hard feat for her. And she was, um, it was a slow trek up and she was the last person, but she got to the summit. And that was an amazing accomplishment for her. She's since then gone on to lose another 14 kg. So she's 34 kilos lighter than when she started. She was 113 kilos when she did her first Fit Banker challenge. And she's not very tall, she's just over five feet. And at 113 kg, she had a BMI of about 30 or so. Uh, she's, now, uh, she's now 79 kilos, which is amazing. So uh, 34 kg lighter. Then there's uh, Preeti. Preeti is somebody who joined a program saying, hey, I'm already fit and healthy because I'm vegan, but I hear you guys coach on mindset stuff. I want to learn about that. And then she does a program and realizes, well, you can be vegan, but that's not necessarily healthy vegan because crisps and sugary stuff are all vegan, but doesn't necessarily mean they're healthy. She does a program, loses 12.6 kg in excess fat only, loses 12% body fat. And now she's a coach and now she'll she'll be a head coach on this July program that's starting. She's gone on to get a six pack now. 
she runs classes every Tuesday. And uh, yeah, she's, you know, a whole new person as a result of taking on her transformation. This is Sue. She's also somebody who did other programs, but it was one to one. She felt lonely. She felt isolated. She's now uh, done a program. She says she loves the sense of community. She's also head coach on the current June challenge that's going on at the moment. Uh, she's a single mom. And as a single mom, it really matters to her that she banks on a fitness so that her girl can grow up to have this powerful being around her. And uh, and so that's what Fit Banker is about. Then there's Anoli, who you mentioned you inspired by. Anoli signed up at 75 kg, very hesitant, says, you don't understand. I had complications with my delivery and pregnancy. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I don't think I can do that exercise. Please tell me what I can do. Tell me what I can't eat. Tell me this. And giving us some guidance from the time she signed up and her actual challenge starting, she lost 3.6 kg. And at 71 kg, she started day one of the first program. By the end of the second one, not at the end of the second one, by day 30 of her second challenge, she was uh, 50 kg. So she's now 49, 50 kg. And she has a she's in the optimal range of fat percentage and muscle mass. And we focus on what's going on inside of you. Uh, and then there's this old man. I call him dad. Uh, he did this program at the age of 70. He, for as far back as we can remember, dad's been on high cholesterol, high BP medication. He uh, did the program at 70. By 71, after four and a half months in, lost 14 and a half kg. His heart health improved. He was asked to discontinue his uh, cholesterol statins, his high BP medication, his daily aspirin. He had 22 pills a day. Now at 76, five years on, he is 63 kilos. He does a 20 minute plank and he does 15 kilometer hikes and he's training for Mount Kilimanjaro. So that's an example of what's possible when you take on your health. And then a lot of you know the amazing uh, Urvi, who uh, just is in her second program. And you heard her share. She was, uh, I should share the, the video recording, which, which I don't have downloaded yet. But she came in a call just sharing how her husband is blown away by how much she gets to do. Like she's breastfeeding. She's doing a lot around the home, supporting everything. And she's managing to make time for her own, her own health through that. So if anyone has an excuse of I'm too busy, or I don't have time, it's Urvi, but we want to have people overcome their excuses. So at the end of our challenge, we're either going to have reasons or we're going to have results. And uh, she's somebody who's definitely caused amazing results and inspired so many of you to be on today. So those of you that were inspired by her, thank you for being inspired by her. That's me I shared earlier. That's I'm the first Zambian to summit Kilimanjaro six times and taking my Three-year-old boy to 4,000 meters was a phenomenal accomplishment for us. And we're hoping to be back again this year while he's four years old. And we're taking him to, uh, we're planning to take him to the summit. So fingers crossed that all happens. And um, let's see how it goes. That said, how do we cause these results? How do we get these amazing results? And how are you going to cause them for yourself? Well, the first thing is we have to give up all that we know, all that we've tried in the past. I've been going to the gym, I do running, I do yoga, I've done this diet, I've done that diet. Take it out for one second, park it to one side. Empty the cup so that we can fill it with some new kind of knowledge. Earlier you spoke about, others spoke about trialing something and you tend to volley back or stay the same or you've gone through phases of your health journey. What you need to get out of your head are your preconceived notions, your assumptions, your mental blockers, the excuses you say that have you justify staying the same. And if you're tired of yo-yo diets, then you want to get all that mental clutter out of your head, which is the things we say, like I've tried this diet and that diet. Those are yo-yo diets or fads. If they, if they don't explain the science, then it's not sustainable. Then it sounds like a gimmick or it sounds like suppression. Or you might think it's about exercising more. If, if you exercise more and you're overweight like I was, you can cause a lot of knee injury and shin splints and a whole bunch of stuff that isn't designed uh, that isn't as a result of doing the wrong exercise at the wrong stage of your journey. If you're overweight, you cut, you don't want to be doing high impact stuff that's impacting your joints. Um, you might think it's about eating less or starving or suppression. Um, that would be emotionally and mentally not enjoyable if you don't understand why you're avoiding certain foods. You might think that it's got to do with fat burning pills. Uh, if there's any pill claiming to burn anything inside of you, it's probably not good to put inside of you. Um, and it probably isn't legit if it claims to burn anything inside of you uh, or you might have an excuse called hey i want to do keto i'm doing paleo i'm doing this metabolic diet because so and so told me about it and worked for them um, 
is what works for others is not specific to you. So you need to really look at why are you doing something and why and how does that apply to you? Um, or you might say, hey, we've been eating this for generations. In fact, it's a house specialty that we we put our chevro and our gati and our tea and we eat that every day. How come you're telling me I can't have that now? My grandmom lived till 93. Well, grandmom probably walked five kilometers to work and back or did some movement around the home that we don't do as much nowadays. I mean, nowadays we don't even, many of us, or at least I speak for myself, is we don't even cook as much as we historically did. Talk about the, the home chores because we can order food off an app right now and it's delivered to you. And previously that was once a month treat. Now we have it three or four times a week. And so the world has changed. Our calorific expenditure has plummeted, but our food consumption has gone up, right? Especially sugars, salts, and the bad fats. Those are pumped into the foods that we consume nowadays, whether it's from a restaurant or whether it's from processed packaged food that we buy off the shelf. Or like me, the doctors or the NHS or the medication will fix it. That was the view I had. And that is, that is a completely resigned view, which is like, if I die, then only do my family get the reward. That was the kind of view I had on taking care of my health. Now, the beginning of the Fit Banker Challenge, and I want you all to know, is that we're not a diet, but what we do do is we ask you to remove foods that are what we call devaluing to your body. They don't add value to your body. In fact, they cause inflammation in your body. But we've never been taught and told that there are foods that are inflammatory in nature. There are certain foods based on the ingredient and the, what happens when they go through the stomach is they create a blood sugar spike. And these foods are called high glycemic index carbs. So my pre-fit banker meals used to look like a cornflakes or a Frosties or a sugary cereal with more sugar added and milk added to it early in the morning. I then rush off to work and around 10 or 11 a.m. I feel a crash. So I need something to lift me up again. So I go for a, a bar which says 11s is on it. Uh, and so it's 11 a.m. So I thought I'm, I'm, I'm following instructions and eating the bar at 11 a.m. And then I uh, have lunch, which is a baguette or a sandwich or a pasta or a pizza. And then 4 p.m. I have uh, biscuits or I have Kit Kat because the Kit Kat says take a break. And so, again, I'm trying to follow instructions based on what the wrapper says. And then in the evening I have pizza or pasta because oh, I'm too tired to cook. So I just order it in on my way home. I consume that and I leave cooking for the weekend. And what's happening, if you see this, this is an indication of a blood sugar spike. We start off at a certain blood sugar level, but these foods push our blood sugar so high that a hormone called insulin comes out and just trying to suppress it down. And it pushes it much lower than its original starting point. And so it goes lower and we feel more fatigued and lethargic and sluggish. And then we try to get it back up by turning to an external source called food. And again, we create this spike and it crashes, spike and it crashes. And the more crashes we have in a day, the more fatigued and lethargic we feel as the day goes on. And it's not natural fatigue. It is created by the food and the inflammation that we've created in our body. And also these foods are what we call acidic in nature. And acidic foods are good for holding on to fat cells together. So you might have heard of the term or you might have used the term, I've got stubborn fat. There's no such thing as stubborn fat. Like your fat doesn't really have an attitude problem, but it's actually the acidic environment we're creating that's holding those fat cells together. And what we do on the Fit Banker Challenge is we start by putting qualitative alternatives. So qualitative alternatives, we're saying, remove the high glycemic index stuff, add in the slower, more complex stuff. So complex carbs, more fiber, good fats, and high protein. That's what our meals now comprise. And so when I look at a meal and I say, hey, where's the protein there? And they say, hey, today's meal is Dokra and Tepla, I'm like, that's carb on carb. I'm not having that stuff. Like, give me proper food. So I got to look at where's my protein source in there and then have the other stuff around it. Um, and so the, the first thing we want to do is to reduce that inflammation, reduce the insulin spikes, and therefore we reduce what slows down our metabolism. What we do is we reboot our metabolism. Now, how did we go wrong in the first place? Well, how did we wind up eating the kind of foods we ate? Most of us just grew up eating foods that our families cooked, that the canteen offered, the school offered, the workplaces offered, the restaurants offered. We never question what was the intent behind the design. We think there's some authority behind there assessing the health and and, share, and ensuring, is this the best food for Bindi? Is this the best food for Pooja? Is this the best food, food for Tanvi? But who said? Like, who went and did that? So the old school way, and this is what's on the gov.uk website, goes into our school curriculum. And it's called the Eat Well Guide. It used to be called the Eat Well Plate. 
and there was a fork and knife on the side and said, you have to have this amount of carb, this amount of dairy, this amount of pulses, lentils, meats, and fish, this amount of veg and fruit, and some cheeky snacks on the side and six to eight glasses of water. Why would you give one piece of information to different people, somebody that's excessively obese with lifestyle disease, why should they have the same guidance as somebody who is underweight, bulimic, has an eating disorder or a lifestyle disease? It doesn't make sense. So informative health is giving everybody one piece of information. What we do is transformative health. Transformative health is educating you on understanding you, that you're so unique by your height, by your body composition, by your lifestyle stresses, the number of kids you have, or the business you do, or the work you do, or the time you sleep, or whatever you're managing, as maybe a carer in your family, taking care of others, all that has an impact on your emotional and mental well-being, which translates into your biology, which translates into your physiology. And so when you sign up to the Fit Banker Challenge, we are asking you to look at and consider your lifestyle. We're asking you to acknowledge and identify what kind of body type you are. We teach you what's called functional eating, which is eat according to the function you're about to engage into. So if I'm going for a big trek, I'm going to have oats in the morning because it gives me slow release energy for the period of the trek. But if I'm going to sleep at night, why would I take in 1200 calories of a pizza, which is what I all previously did? I would eat a pizza, I'd feel sleepy, which is a carb crash as I'm watching TV, and I would knock out on the couch after I come back from a long day at work. And I would think work got me tired. I would think it's been a busy day. It's not been a busy day. It was the freaking pizza that created a crash and Sky News on TV, and that put me to sleep, right? And that's not functional eating. That's a complete mismatch because I'm putting 1,200 calories into a body, and then I sleep. And while I'm asleep, within the next three to four hours, that's broken down, and it's looking for where do I put this extra energy? But I'm not spending it because I'm sleeping, and so it goes to storage, i.e. fat. And so I completely commanded my body to build more fat. And we teach you how we do that subconsciously and in error because we don't understand the correlation between food and function and time of day. And if we understand that, then we can optimize our body and our well-being. Then body composition. Historically, we thought, how, how, you know, how's your health? We just talk about our weight or our BMI. Those are such shallow indicators. Today, we have a scales that are available everywhere. Even in Kenya and Zambia, we get them where you can check your body composition. How much of you is fat percentage? how much of you is muscle mass, and how much of you is bone. If you understand that, then you know what level you're carrying and what should be your optimal. Then we work on a plan to get you from excess fat percentage to optimal. And then, like I said, we work on multiple muscle groups. So not just physical, but emotional, mental, and spiritual. And so we look at the underlying factors like relationships in our life. We look at our sleep patterns. We look at various other stresses between what we call mind-body connection that's impacting our well-being. So here are some of the mental blockers I had. That's me and my fiance at my engagement drinks. And I used to really think of that period, if I don't marry this girl quick, she stays the same, I'm just getting bigger, she's gonna run off with somebody else. That was my belief then, no, I'm joking. What I thought then was, how come this girl can eat and drink as much as me, but she can party the night away, and she can bungalow the night away, and I feel sluggish, I'm lethargic, I'm groggy, and, uh, and the next day I've put on half a kilo. I was so clear life is unfair. And I had someone to blame, it was my dad. I said, dad, you're overweight, your brothers are overweight, I've got your freaking genes. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm doing everything right, but your genes are messing me up. What I didn't know inside of my internal belief system that we spoke of at the start, the three I's, there's inspiration, there's information, and implementation. I didn't have new information. And there's a 5,000 year old science in Ayurveda called the science of body types. We are different people by body type. There is what's called vata, pitta, or kapha body type. And I never knew this. And I remember one day somebody who is an Ayurvedic expert looked at me and he said, I was saying, I feel very sluggish and lethargic and underproductive for most of the day. And then at 4 p.m., I feel this boost of energy where I'm productive. He looks at me, he goes, you're a kapha body type. I'm like, what the hell does he mean by that? And I thought this Ayurveda stuff was all woo-woo nonsense. And I started to research into it that body type. And I realized, wow, I'm consuming foods that are further slowing down my body. And there are other foods that will optimize my metabolism and boost my body. And in Western science, we call it ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And each of the body types comes with a certain metabolism. And we explain what metabol metabolism is. We let you know what slowed it down and therefore not to do those things. And we let you know how to reboot or boost your metabolism. We then introduce and bring accountability to your body. So how can you remove 
a pound of fat from your body. We give you the mathematical calculation. So everyone is at a certain composition of fat, muscle, and bone, and there's a healthy range to get to. So for females, you need to be, or you want to be between 21 and 33% body fat. Anything extra means your organs have to fuel more of your body that it doesn't necessarily need to. Remember, fat was designed as hunter-gatherers. If we went on a long trek or a pilgrimage, or we went for a number of days without food, we had stores of food inside of us to fuel us. But guess what, nowadays, and for the last 30, 40, 50 years of our lives, we haven't experienced shortage of food, and it's always been available or accessible because we now live in urban communities. Uh, we don't need to tap into that stored fat, unless, of course, you join me on Mount Kilimanjaro, which at some point we did, do dig into our fat reserves. Um, but we are, men should get to 45% muscle mass and somewhere between 10 and 19% fat. Females should be 36% muscle mass and somewhere between 21 and 33% fat. But most females that join our program start off at 38%, 45%, or even 50%, which means half of their body is just fat. They do need some fat, at least 21%, um, but they're carrying 50%. So why are we carrying extra load of weight? It impacts our joints, impacts our knees, impacts our ankles, and we think that we've got useless shoes, but it's the extra load that we carry. Accountability. How do we track and record every gram and granule of what goes into you? So over the 90 days of the program, not for life, but over the 90 days, we ask you to record your food in MyFitnessPal. It's an app that we use. We don't go by the default settings. And if you're somebody that has already signed up or are signing up, go to the nutrition and macronutrient goals. We want you to change that to make sure all your calories, 30% are coming from protein, 30% are coming from fat, and 40% are coming from carbs. If you're somebody that is signed up already or you will be signing up, we'll be giving you a demo video, a step-by-step -step video of how to set up MyFitnessPal. So don't worry too much about this. You can also take a screenshot and you can follow through each of these steps. Uh, RunKeeper is where we record our activity when you go for a walk or a run. The basic exercise on the FitBanker Challenge is just walking. So at a minimum, when you ask what level of exercise, how intense is it, what do I need to do, we ask if you can walk. And if you can walk, that's the minimum that you need to do. And so my fitness pal records your calories in and RunKeeper records your calories out. That way we can track what we call, are you creating a calorie deficit if one of your goals is to lose fat? Not everybody wants to lose fat. Some people join our program because they've got a hyper fast metabolism and they want to slow it down. So some people actually want to gain weight on our program, uh, but I'm not sure any of you what your goals are till you've completed. But those that want to do, do lose fat, you have to create this thing called a calorie deficit. And my this is a screenshot from my fitness pal. This is a person who's supposed to consume 1,700 calories if they want to stay the same. They consumed 1,100 calories. They did. They created more deficit by creating a burn of 273, and they have a deficit remaining of 864. And so the net deficit at the end of the day is what we look at. So we want people to create an average of about 500 a day. If you can create an average of about 500 a day and you don't under eat, uh, then you will be on course by end of the week to create a calorie deficit of 3,500 calories. That's one pound of fat. That's how we lose a pound of fat. So if you want to lose a pound of fat between now and next week, create a 3,500 calorie deficit. You can also do that in a day. if uh, you do something like a day on Mount Kilimanjaro, we would create two and a half to three and a half thousand calories, depending on your body weight and size. Um, alkalize, right? So most of our bodies are acidic. And how do you therefore alkalize the body? An alkaline environment has been shown to give us peak energy. We feel most energetic, energetic, most oxidized, and then we're operating at peak performance. And so the green goddess smoothie and the blue beet smoothies are two smoothies we recommend. Feel free to screenshot these if you want to start making them be between now and day one of your challenge. Or if you want high resolution versions of these, you can message me on whatever social media platform we're connected to, and I can send you uh, these smoothie recipes. When you sign up to the challenge, you'll get these plus others that we share with you in uh, one of the setup emails as you prepare for day one. Now, that said, you might be doing some of these, or you might even be exercising. But one of the follies people make with exercising is they're exercising, but they're not exercising as effectively as they can. So they might be doing some calorie burn, but it's not the best way to do it. 
And most people say we don't have time because they spend an whole hour or two hours walking and they burn only this amount of calories. We're saying there's a shorter way that you can create the same calorie burn if you achieve three things in your workout. And you will trigger in your body a process called thermogenesis. Thermogenesis, as the name suggests, thermo meaning heat and genesis to generate or create, is your body can generate internal heat by breaking down stored fat or stored energy in fat cells by doing what's called a HIIT workout, high intensity interval training. And this is a seven minute version where you do each of these exercises for 40 seconds, then rest only 20 seconds, then do the next exercise for 40 seconds, rest 20 seconds, and go and so on. You can do one round, two rounds, three rounds, or four rounds of this, and you can push it up to 30 or 40 minutes. So you can screenshot this, or you can go to our YouTube channel and you can see multiple workouts there. Or if you join, we have a WhatsApp group called FitBanker Workouts. You can join that group. It's free to join. And on that group, we send you a daily Zoom link where you can join and attend our free workouts. If you want to be added to that WhatsApp group, please message me with your WhatsApp number and I will get you added to that WhatsApp group. Just put your number and your name. Um, and uh, you can also join our Facebook group. There's a Facebook group called FitBanker Transforming a Billion Lives. And on there, you can uh, tune in live on catch up on Facebook because we stream them to Facebook. Now, when you're doing a workout, there are three things we look out for. Are you pushing to breathlessness? Are you breaking sweat? And are you getting your heart rate to about a sweet spot is about 70% of your max heart rate. But if you're anywhere within the range of 60 to 90% and you're oscillating up and down, then you're likely on track and on trajectory to create the fat burn. Now, I'm about to wrap up today's session, but I want to share and acknowledge that what we do is a group-based program. And the reason why we perform better with groups is, well, there's an African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We're looking to make a lifestyle change that lasts a lifetime. So this is the long-term game. This isn't a quick fix. This isn't a, a one bite-sized item, you know, fixes all. And so um, by doing it with a group, we're likely to be more consistent, we'll show up more, we're likely to push harder and further, and we have the culture of sharing our progress updates. And by sharing your progress updates, we'll worry less about what others think when we see others share. And we're like, what, that girl's sharing that and in her bikini, and that's her progress, and she's fine, I'm gonna share mine as well. And so we're encouraged to do a little bit more and push each other outside our comfort zone. Now, as well-intended as we are and as much of an achiever as we are in our lives, most of you guys are achievers. You, you show up on this call, you have a relationship to what's doing something you say you will do, like literally booking up on a masterclass and showing up. I can tell you now for uh, six of you on, five of you on, there is there was somebody who, who dropped. For five of you on, there's about 20 people registered out of which five people show up to give you a sense of the show up rate in life. But that does already a bit of the filtering work for us. It tells us who are people that take action in their life. That said, even though you're an achiever, you have what's called a self-sabotage mechanism, which is whenever you're doing something new as an adult learner or something uncomfort uncomfortable or something unfamiliar or something that is some form of resistance for you, Right, your body, your body and your mind will say, I'm too busy, I've got this work to do, uh, I need to catch up on Netflix, I need to uh, deal with the kids, or the tech is an issue, or I don't have time. Whatever that is, we, we make a host of reasons and excuses to get us out of that performance. Or we do things like instant gratification. We avoid this workout to go and have a glass of wine, or to go and eat that pizza, to go have a chocolate, or have an ice cream. Or we go for a workout, we burn 300 calories, and then we get a blueberry muffin and a frappuccino and we put 600 calories back into us. And then we wonder why I've been going to the gym for so long, but nothing's happening. So that's a big part of our coaching. And this is why you want to have a coach. So each week you have a coach and you have a conversation with them and they're supporting you and empowering you to get out of the monotony. Now, uh, ultimately to wrap up, I said at the start is what I've shared right now, the information I've shared are the tools that are delivered on the Fit Banker Challenge. But why do I not mind sharing them? Because I said at the start, the information alone doesn't make a difference. You can be inspired, you can get access to all the information, but what makes a difference is the implementation structure. And there's a quote by Aristotle, which is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And so starting is easy, but staying in action and then making that continue for 
a good period of your lifetime or the rest of your lifetime is how do we make that second nature? How does that become ingrained in us? And so you want to have a support team around you, a supporting environment. You want to drip feed yourself with a host of habits, which is what we provide, which is what we make present to you to keep you in action. And so um, that's a big part of the, the Fit Banker Challenge. And that's what we deliver. That's where the results and the action taken that causes the results happen. Okay, that said, uh, it's a wrap. I'm going to just explain what happens when you sign up to the Fit Banker Challenge. But I want to pause now and check in if any of you have any questions around what I've shared, or if you have any other questions around something you're dealing with with health and you haven't heard me cover that. Um, yeah, go ahead, uh, Bindi. Um, okay, so um, I mean, you've talked about you know parking a lot of the stuff that we've all, always been doing. Yeah. I think that was just like you're trying to explain to us that um, for now we just need to park it and and just um, take in something mm -hmm. new. Correct. Um, so if we join the challenge, yeah. Uh, I mean, is it something like for myself? I'll just mention that you know I I train four days, five days a week. I do uh, my yoga. Mm -hmm. I don't walk. And I know you've said that, you know, a, a big part of it is that we need to walk. Yeah. Um, would 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 I have to uh, change? Like, would I still be carrying on the routine and adding in the walking? Or would, would, would I have to change a lot of things? Or that would basically be based on all the information that comes out from what my goals are and what yeah and how, so sure that's uh, one question yeah another question um and i think this is a reason why i'm also plateauing and and going all over the place is because i'm i'm now i've now hit menopause a bit earlier mm -hmm. than than it should be but mm -hmm. i think that's one of the reasons so mm -hmm. is this addressed during the challenge uh, um yeah. and the other thing is do you have it it like you said there's a challenge starting yeah um at some point yeah uh and if i'm not at home mm -hmm. like if i'm traveling because it's the summer season and my boys are coming back for their holidays and we may be traveling yeah um even though you know with the covid restrictions yeah would that restrict would that restrict me in starting the challenge now or should I wait a bit? Yeah. So the next challenge starts on 26 July. We have limited challenges in the year. There are only six challenges in the year. Four are underway or are over. So there are only two remaining, 26 July and 13 September. The 13 September okay. goes right up to Christmas. The 26 July will end in about uh, October. And um, I recommend, uh, and this one specifically, I'm inviting you guys to join the one starting 26 July, which is in two weeks. Now, whatever you have coming your way, visitors or you're traveling or weddings, etc. I say that the more obstacles or hurdles that you have or distractions that you have, the more you want to try the challenge. Because if you can pull off 40% of the requests we're asking you in the middle of all that's going on, then you're likely to do it a lot more better when everything is subtle, calm, uh, controlled environment. So we do recommend that health is just a thing. Why would you delay? Why would you delay experiencing more energy and more strength? So the invite is to, to join now. Number two is, I'll talk about plateauing. Uh, the reason we plateau is you've been doing something over and over again, and it got you from A to B. And once it got you from A to B, it's not the same thing that will get you from B to C. And what most of us do is we keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. And that's exactly what causes a plateau. Now, when you got from A to B, your muscle grew, your stamina grew, your energy grew, your endurance grew to do something at that enhanced level, say the regular yoga you're doing. However, your muscles have now grown to that and your muscles work on a principle called overload or progressive overload principle, which means you have to keep presenting them with a new challenge to break up and shake up the old pattern. So when you say you work three or four times a week, is that all yoga or do you do other types of workouts? When you no, do I do different. Like I do um, high intensity CrossFit type, a little bit of weight training. Yeah. It's a mixture. Yeah. Okay. And then the yoga is two, three times a week as well. Okay. 
Okay. So some days I'd be doing two things. Um, I'd be doing the yoga and um, the the training, which is which is a maximum of like 30 to 40 minutes. It's not an hour and a half or. Okay. So, so the answer is this, if uh, we do ask you to do a minimum amount of cardio a day. So depending on the quality of your exercise, there are two types of training. There's cardio and there's resistance. When we're doing yoga, when we're doing CrossFit, when we're doing weight-based training, most of that would be more resistance work. And what we ask you to do is depending on the person, the height and your stage, it could be anything from, and not all at once, but from 40 minutes of walking or some form of cardio and up to 90 minutes a day, uh, not all at once. And so that means it might be spread out across the day. And so if you um, do 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minute walk after, after your lunch, uh, 20 minute walk after supper, that would be adequate for the day. Or you do go for a 30 minute walk in the morning and do 20, 30 minutes after supper, that also would be adequate. Again, depending on number of steps. So we ask you to get a certain step count on the challenge. And if you are uh, not doing walking, you're currently doing those four, I would recommend that you incorporate walking if fat loss is one of your goals. And number two, even it will support you as you're going through menopause. Now we don't specifically co cover something on menopause, but you know maybe I, I can incorporate something, but we have a session on, web on hormones. We have a webinar on hormones. And we will explain to you how certain hormones are working against you and how you can alter your routine to have more happy and healthy hormones present in you and fewer fight or flight hormones, which is a function of, like when we're going through menopause, there's an imbalance or other stressful periods in our life, or even that time of the month for ladies. So how do we optimize a process in our body called homeostasis? How do we make it easier for us to get into homeostasis? Okay. So I hope that's answered the questions okay. that you had. Yeah, I yeah. Thanks. I think I'll I'll probably get more answers once I join. Sure, sure. And and you can keep asking throughout the program. We do uh, encourage that. Uh, Pooja, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I had uh, three quick questions. If that's all right. Sure. Um, the first one was um, uh, like um, Vindi was saying that you know if over summer there's I don't know busy times and I like this idea of but if you can if you can commit during a busy uh, challenging time that's good but based on um what I just saw something about you were mentioning webinars and things like that I don't know let's say you we have, there is a family function or event are you able to what if you miss the webinar can you watch it later the same day or something like that like I, I wouldn't want to miss the information so that's the first question yeah yeah so I'll answer that so the answer is and also Tanvi has asked a question in the chat around the live workouts and the time difference. So we have, like I say, people from 25, 26 different countries yeah. over the years have done our program. And so they're recorded. And what happens is we share with you the recording right after the webinar. And if uh, uh, what we ask you to do is to watch that recording within 24 hours of when it was run live. And the reason is some of the assignments or the requests or tasks after that webinar are time sensitive. So please try to watch schedule time in. So if you know you're traveling, you can't make it. They're often at 7.30 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. UK time in the evening. If you can't join live or if it's impacting your sleep at that time, then schedule in an hour and a half or hour 15 minutes. They're, they're one hour 15 minutes long. Other than webinar one and webinar 10, those are two hours long. Because webinar one, we're doing welcome and intros and there's a whole host of stuff we cover. And webinar 10, we are uh, doing acknowledgements and people are celebrating. Wow, I, my goal was to lose 10 kg and I've lost 25 kg. That's actually happened, by the way, in the last challenge. So someone had a 10 kg goal and he is now the new male record holder. He's lost 25 kg. So the answer is yes, they're recorded and you can watch them on catch up. And for the live workouts, they're streamed to the Facebook group, which you're all welcome to join the Facebook group even now. It's called Fit Banker Transforming a Billion Lives, if you're not already a part of it. And that's open to the public. So you can join and you can invite 10 others. And I'd appreciate it if you invited 10 others uh, to join that group. And uh, it, uh, and on there, you'll see the workout of the week. If you want to get a sense, there are beginner workouts, there are advanced and intermediate workouts, there are bhangra workouts, there's a dance class, there's yoga workouts. So there's a lot that you can do from those on catch up. Thank you. Um, my second question was, I really like the fact that the whole holistic approach, because I, I completely agree. I think that 
to do this you need, you need the met mental approach and spiritual and everything else you know like if part of me is like I'm 90% there like I just want to go do you know what just do it don't actually think about it too much and just commit to it and then whatever comes up deal with it then do you think that's an okay attitude to go in with <laughs> like to just be like you know what let me just not even think about it just say I'm gonna do it and then deal with it as it comes up that's yeah do, do you have uh are you joining from a desktop right now yeah 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 I I'm on well I'm on a laptop Okay, so the best way to, to kill off that mindset is to click on the internet browser. You type in fitbanker.com yeah. forward slash go, and then you click sign up now, and then you follow through. That's the best way, <laughs> that's the best way to kill that off. And, and the answer is, what, what you want to distinguish about yourself, and a lot of us have this, is we try to look for certainty before execution. And the reason is, yeah. we're conditioned to think, I'm so good at succeeding at things, I want to make sure I can pull this one off too. And we tell you this on the <laughs> Banker Challenge, it's a pitfall to try to do it perfect. In fact, okay. even our relationships aren't perfect. Whenever we go and you look at all the myths, there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. There isn't perfect parenting. There isn't perfect kids. It is about basking in our imperfections that I slipped up. If, and so we actually say, if you can do the Fit Banker Challenge at least 40% by design, you get amazing results. And those that do it 80% or 90% by, by design, they just, you know, blow the results out the water. And there's always an opportunity to, like I say, encore, to do it again. And, um, and I'll, I'll talk a bit about, um, about what's there. So, but the answer is, I would say, yeah, definitely don't overthink it because it's not yeah. a thinking program. This is an implementation and accountability program. So we hold you accountable to take action. Yeah, thank you. I get you're certainly going to be better off than when you started, right? Like I was, this is what I say to the kids I teach. I'm like, if you reach for the stars, you may not reach them, but you'll be further than the sky or whatever. You know what? I can't remember that saying. Okay. Absolutely. And my last question was um, yeah. health related. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was really sorry to hear about your wife. Um, I myself just went through a very early miscarriage just two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and in fact, that's when I was speaking to a friend and that's when they said, you know what, you need to speak to an early, that, that's kind of where it started. Um, so first of all, from a, and the second thing is that I, uh, health related too, is that I have a hernia, like my intestines pop out, I have to shove them back in, it's fine. It's, but um, so some of these exercises, like I'm not allowed to do, like I'm not allowed to do a plank or whatever. whatever. So. I don't know if there's anybody um, that can guide on what exercises I can and can do, can't do from a health perspective, or is that something I have to, I should regulate myself, or is there anyone who can give advice from that perspective? And yeah. Is it okay to start this challenge? I think it is from because I don't have to do anything too extreme if I just had the miscarriage. Do you know anything about that at all? No, you can do this right now. We've had people do our challenge, trying for kids. We've had people do our challenge pregnant we've had people do our challenge get pregnant during the 90 days and we've had uh you know <laughs> quite fully pregnant uh, ladies as well as new moms who've just delivered and are breastfeeding who've done the fit banker challenge yeah. i'm going to share a story with you in a second about uh fertility and somebody who was struggling with that and if you are trying for a baby and you had a miscarriage and uh then i really would implore you to just don't overthink it and get on the program you'll be grateful for the healthy environment that you create internally as a body. Also, you'll understand why you create a calming body because we're either in a fertile state internally, hormonally, or we're in a hostile state. And when we're in a fight or flight, we create a non-conducive environment for pregnancy. And we talk about the spiral where women trying for a baby every month that they have their period, they go into a state of stress because, oh, I missed it again. And they continue to get into a spiral of, being in fight or flight hormones, which is they're pumped with adrenaline, cortisol, and other stressful hormones, which when they spike, we don't have the healthy hormones that are needed for healthy pregnancy, like oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. And so what you want to do is to bring that ease and calm and not bring that significance. And um, uh, and that, that you got pregnant, and I'm sorry to you about the miscarriage, but the fact that you got pregnant means you are healthy and able to conceive. But I'm going to share with you in a, a couple slides just as we wrap up one story of somebody who went through this. Um, but uh, the answer is for, for the miscarriage and pregnancy, this supports you in the journey, number one, and will support you through the pregnancy for a healthy uh, baby growing in you and post-pregnancy. 
And uh, with regards to the hernia, we have a coach who has a hernia and a few others that have that. Um, and uh, we, we, I think we have two coaches, I think. Uh, and as a result, uh, all it is is, yeah, when you sign up and there's a commencement questionnaire under, there's an area called, do you have any injuries or illnesses we need to know about? Please put that there. Specifically, uh, once you're signed up, you and I can have a call or join what's called a Friday night surgery. Uh, the main thing is we're going to ask you to, you have to be responsible around your exercise because we can't supervise and monitor you when you're doing your stuff, but you need to ensure that you're not doing something that extenuates or extends that zone or area. That's the main thing. But also there are exercises that we need to work on in that region that strengthen muscle so that this becomes an issue of the past, right? So uh, sometimes it's the muscles there where we're exposed, the hernia that we need to develop to support more control in that region. Absolutely, thank you very much, thank you. Cool, you're welcome. So uh, very I'm quickly, gonna, guys. I'm gonna find... Okay, cool. I'm gonna very quickly wrap up. Like, what does the challenge include when you sign up? You have 10 webinars like this, they're an hour, 15 minutes, and the first and the 10th are two hours long. Uh, the meal plans you get given are like this. This is an extract of lunch options. So when people say, hey, what are we eating? This looks like rabbit food. I'm like, not really, there's quite a lot of options you can have. We will remove some of the complex carbs. You can have a lot of your lentils, your dals, your subjis. And so you can cook for your whole family and you can avoid the roti and the rice and you'll have A, B, C, D, right? That, and you'll have double the quantity of that good stuff. This is just lunch, but there's also breakfast options. There's supper options. There are snack options that you can have to get to your goal for the day. Uh, you do a body type assessment when you sign up on the questionnaire. We provide you with training programs, which right now are simplistic PDF. And on that PDF, we will give you uh, workouts that you can do for, um, uh, you know, like chest, for back, for leg. It's called isolation training. So we will focus on each muscle group per day and or, or two muscle groups on a day. And you have to print those out and go through each day and say, okay, this one, four sets, this many reps. So you've got to understand that. If you don't understand it, you can check on YouTube, you can ask a coach, or you can even work with a PT in person if it supports you. So if you go to a gym and you tell the trainer, hey, this is what I got to do, will you take me through this routine? They will. Or if you have a buddy you go work out and train with, that can also support you. But just giving you a heads up that we deliver a plan, you can also work with your own PT uh, and in most cases, it doesn't conflict with what we're offering. And you can do your own CrossFit, your own F45, your own other programs out there that you want to take on. Uh, the Fit Banker Challenge, you get to be part of an online group and community on Facebook. There's a group called Fit Banker Campus, which you can request to join once you've signed up. You have a coach who's a group coach and you're part of a WhatsApp group. You have Friday Night Surgeries, which is a bonus thing I run. So it's hot seat Q&A and coaching with me and any customization needed for your plan. Say, hey, I've now got to this percentage. Should I tweak my macros? Should I increase my training? Should I reduce my cardio? We start to look at all of that. Uh, but that starts to happen around what we call phase two of your program. So it's around the second month or third month of your program, depending on how quickly you first implement routine. And then there are the Zoom workouts that I mentioned we have. You can even join those now, whether or not you're on the Fit Banker Challenge. Uh, they're right now currently still being run pro bono. They were being run pro bono for lockdown. Uh, and we plan to run them for what we thought were the three months of lockdown, but it's gone on. And so it's been 15, 16 months of us running these complimentary classes uh, to the world. Uh, what's important is what you get to be after. So this is a lady who joined us. And after, during her pregnancy, she, she got gestational diabetes. She was told at her bloods review that she is going to be, she's pre-diabetic and she's going to be categorized type two. And unless, and she won't be around for a third son's, um, uh, her third born's uh, 10th birthday if she doesn't deal with her diabetes. And she worked as a phlebotomist in that lab. She reached out to us actually in tears and crying to say, Ronnie, you have no idea. I can't, I'd love to do your program, but I can't afford it right now because I'm spending so much on my medical insurance and medication. I said, what if you could cut off that medication for life? How much of a saving would that make you? And so she took a punt, did what she did, signed up to the program, and she lost 14.5 kg in, four, in uh, four and a half months, in three months. And the first month she um, reversed her diabetes. She was given the all clear that she's no longer diabetic. They thought there was an error. They had to test her twice. And she worked in that lab. So they had to test her twice. And she got such a breakthrough in understanding how much she didn't know about health 
working in that environment. She left that jo uh, job. She uh, became a real estate uh, realtor in Virginia, and that's what she does now. So when I say you alter your relationship to yourself, people go through career changes where they discover that that work environment didn't serve me for my optimal emotional and mental well-being. Uh, it's part of what happens. There are people who have transformed fertility. This is Ushma Vagela. They had one child. They had the child through IVF because they were told they could never conceive naturally. Five years of trying, they couldn't get number two. They were going back to the IVF clinic. IVF clinic says, sorry, you can't join your, um, you can't start your IVF process. You're still too overweight. So they sent her back for a whole year. She tried everything, lost three kg, comes back. And uh, the clinic says, sorry, you can't do this. You're still not lost enough. She uh, reaches out to us, does the Fit Banker Challenge. In the first 10 weeks, she loses 8 kg. By end of the program, she's 11.8 kilos lighter. She successfully conceived via IVF. They just wanted baby number two. They ended up getting twins. And we were so blown away by that, that uh, I flew down to Zambia at the time. I was in the UK. I came down to Zambia to interview her. And the baby twins were five months old. We did this interview. And because they were told they could never conceive naturally, they kept doing what they were doing uh, in their free time. And they were then pregnant naturally for the first time with baby number four. And she was three months pregnant when her twins were five months. So she went from one baby to four babies in a 20 month window faster than a BMW. So that's what's possible, Pooja, if you take on boosting and optimizing your health. Uh, and then um, the boost in confidence. This is somebody who's in his 70s, his name is Jagdish Raitata. He's diabetic, took on the program at 72 does a program, he's reduced his diabetic medication from four doses a day to one dose a day, and he's about to get off it. He does our workouts. So when you think you can or cannot do our workouts, he can do our workouts, as can my 76 year old dad. And then for some people, it's a boost in confidence where they realize they've broken a record. She's the new female record holder. She lost 18.8 kg in 90 days. She's on her second challenge. She's actually with Urvi, um, and she's the, the current all time in six year female record holder. The male record holder is uh, uh, somebody from the US Vijay who's lost 25 kg and he's also on his second challenge working on strength, toning and conditioning. So that's an example of what's possible after you've taken on the Fit Banker Challenge. And what do you get to do and who do you get to be after that is what you want to get connected to. Um, on that note, we will be wrapping up today's uh, session. Um, and uh, just to clarify, guys, the link is in the bottom right corner on there. So I'm putting it in the chat if anyone. Okay, fitbanker.com forward slash go. Um, and of course, we can do one to one coaching. But what I want to talk about what's more fun, what's more enjoyable, what's better for us to deliver, and the experience you get is doing it as a team, as part of a group. For all that you get every week, if you went to see one nutritionist for one session, you'd probably pay for a good nutritionist 100 to 150 pounds. Um, but you have a, con a webinar a week, you have surgery a week, you have coaching call a week, works out to about 100 bucks a week. Um, right now, we still have, and I don't know why we still have them, they should be gone by now, but hopefully they'll be gone uh, as we approach two weeks to go. The mega early bird price, which is 497 is what's available on the website. Starts on 26 July and uh, it lasts a lifetime. And so if you ever want to encore, do the program again, after the first challenge, the second challenge starts at 210 pounds. So it's a much less price for you to continue the journey and review the program so that you stay in continu continuity till we get to optimal body composition. So that's, uh, that's after the first program. But right now we have some mega early bird packs for 497. And uh, I am really looking forward to it. It would be amazing if all of you guys can join this upcoming challenge. You will all be together. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be an awesome, awesome thing for us to do together. You're also welcome to invite any friends or family along. And it is a great journey that we can do with others. Um, okay, so Pooja, welcome. Awesome. Looking forward to having you join. And uh, yeah, exciting. So you'll be added to a WhatsApp group uh, starting next week. And on that group, and you'll get two emails called What Next. And on the What Next, just please read everything printed out. And it will tell you what kind of scale to use or get uh, any supplements to keep ready and prepare for 
and a shopping list as well to keep ready. So you can start to get ready for day one of your challenge. And also you can join the, the FitBank or Workouts group if you want to start getting into some workouts while you're at home. So you can do them at home, outdoors, or in the gym as well. Uh, any other questions, guys, before we wrap up? Anyone have any questions or any comments or anything they just want to share? Um, yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for um, all this. It's been really informative. And I think I'm definite. I think um, I will probably join. Uh, I, I keep telling myself I'm not going to try anything new, but um, I feel like maybe this is this is what is going to be my, it's going to get me where I want to be. So yeah. I think I'm going to join. I think I'm awesome. going to start from the community. Awesome, join. I'll be looking forward to to yours and Pooja's uh, pop notifications pop up on my phone today. So uh, leap in. <laughs> we look forward to welcoming you. And you'll just have more prep time before day one. So there's just over two weeks left. And looking forward to you joining. Anyone else that has any other questions, um, you know, message me. I'm going to put my number in the chat if anybody needs it and it's a whatsapp number so because i am roaming right now so if you have any questions message me there um and if your name doesn't show up on whatsapp please be sure to remind me uh your name when you're messaging me and if you have any queries ask me and um yeah you can save that number but we will also be on the same whatsapp group starting next week if you are in the challenge and uh, look forward to welcoming you and as a reminder guys um, you know, this is an investment in you. I would love for you guys to get to optimal so that you can be the best version of whatever it is you want to be. And the why that you created at the start, I'd love to see each of you fulfill on that. And that's that's a journey and that's a, a, a game for you to create for yourself to get onto. But to achieve that, to fulfill on that, we want to have an empowering body, mind and intellect. And I look forward to being your partner in that journey. Uh, as we go through uh, our transformations together. On that note, guys, thanks all for being on. It is a wrap now, and uh, see you on the challenge. Bye for now. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Okay, got it, Tanvi. Uh, please do talk to your hubby for sure and have him join too. Okay, bye for now, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.